Hi Dancers, Jess here. Welcome back to the Whole Dancer YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk holiday survival. So during the holidays, dancers tend to have a lot going on. If you're in a nutcracker, whether it's a professional performance or a performance put on by your school, there's rehearsals, there's performances, there's just a lot to juggle. It can tend to feel very overwhelming. I remember during that time when I was dancing professionally, it was just totally exhausting. There was no time to shop. It was hard to keep food stocked because you were just running out of things. So there's a lot going on and a lot to consider. So I want to talk a little bit about time off. If you do actually get the time off to go home and see family for Thanksgiving or Christmas, how can you maximize your time there and survive the holidays at home and have a great time and a rejuvenating time that doesn't drag you down or you know take up more of your energy? Eating well at holiday gatherings can be a challenge. If you're concerned about overeating and overindulging in foods that maybe you don't typically eat, there are a couple of things that you can do to you know, stay in a positive headspace while you're doing it and not go overboard. One of the first things I would suggest is to pregame with some healthy food. So sometimes we take on the tactic of, oh, well, I'm going into this huge meal, say for Thanksgiving, and so you decide not to eat anything leading up to the meal. Well, that's a surefire recipe for overeating. So instead of doing that, eat, eat breakfast, eat lunch, depending on what time you guys are going to be eating dinner, and make sure that those meals are super healthy, packed with nutrients, maybe have some salad, some vegetables. Make sure that you're getting in lots of nutrient-dense food so that you feel good about going into the next meal and you're also not starving. Eat some protein, you know, make sure it's fully well-rounded. So you wanna have the vegetables, you wanna have the protein, the healthy fats, some complex carbs. If you do that, then you won't go into the actual holiday meal ravenous and wanting to just gorge yourself and eat tons and tons of everything. So always eat a sensible breakfast and lunch leading up to those holiday meals. I also always suggest that you remind yourself that this is not the last time you're gonna to get to eat those foods. I think a lot of times we go into a holiday meal thinking, oh, well, this is the only time I'm ever eating stuffing or this is the only time I'm gonna eat my mom's sweet potatoes with the marshmallows and sugar and all that stuff or this is the only time I'll be eating pumpkin pie and that leads to going overboard as well. So instead of telling yourself that, remind yourself you will get to eat those foods again. Depending on how long you're home, also, you might even get to enjoy some leftovers the following day. So there's no reason to overeat to the point of discomfort. You should always feel comfortable with the amount of food that you're eating, even on holidays. You don't want to ever have that time when you say, oh, well, I'm going to feel totally disgustingly stuffed, and just because it's Thanksgiving, that means it's okay. If you do tend to, or you do end up overindulging, forgive yourself. Harping on it, tearing yourself down, saying that, oh, like, I have to eat nothing tomorrow in order to make up for this is not gonna work well. If you do end up overeating, going to the next day with a totally balanced approach. You don't want to go into the next day and under eat because then you'll get into a sort of yo-yoing cycle with food and that is always destructive. So instead say, okay, maybe I overate at this meal. It's okay, like tomorrow I'm gonna go back to all the healthy eating. I'll have a sensible breakfast. I might eat this, this, and this, and it's gonna be fine. Forgiving yourself and moving on is really essential with continuing to eat healthfully and find balance with food. Staying in shape over the holidays is something that I think dancers tend to be concerned with, partly because of all the food associated with the holidays. They think, oh, I'm going to be overeating, and then I might not be dancing as much, or I'm not dancing at all, or whatever it might be. I think that the holidays are a great time to look for ways that you can be active with your family. So if you're at home for Thanksgiving, you know, see if you can get your sibling or parent or aunt or someone to go for a walk with you that morning. That's another nice way to, you know, lead up to a big meal is if you take some take a walk get some fresh air you know enjoy the day as much as possible with family and friends but stay active 
I think that's another good approach to being at home during holiday times. See if there are friends or family who are also home and who would like to go and try out a workout with you. So if you don't typically do yoga, but there's a yoga studio near your parents' house that you'd like to go and check out, go and do it, invite a friend, make it something fun, and let it be something that's supporting you in staying healthy and fit over the holidays. I think too, that going back to the food stuff, making sure that you're finding that balance, okay? So if you eat a little too much or you eat quite a bit on Thanksgiving, you can totally bounce back the next day just by going straight back to healthy eating practices. And if you continue those, even if you sprinkle in some of those holiday indulgences, you shouldn't really be gaining weight. Your body will adjust, and if you stay active and don't just totally lay around and do nothing the whole time, you'll be able to maintain where you would like to be. Do take the time for yourself to rest. You know, it's important to take that rest time, relax, decompress, stop stressing about the choreography or the performances that you have coming up and allow it to be an actual time for self-care and calm. Go into the holidays considering the relationships that you have with family and having realistic expectations. So if you have a really hard time getting along with one of your siblings and you're concerned about going into the holidays, it's gonna be stressful, it's going to be uncomfortable, you know, prepare ahead of time for it. Think about how you typically approach that person and see if maybe you can shift the way that you do it and perhaps it will have a more positive outcome. It's also helpful to go in with that positive attitude. So a lot of times, you know, if we have that difficult family member, we think, oh gosh, it's going to be so awful when I'm interacting with that person. And, you know, then we sort of set ourselves up to be in a negative headspace when we're around them. If you set yourself up and say, you know what, maybe it won't be that bad this year. Maybe it's gonna be okay. I think it's gonna be better. I'm gonna go into it with a positive attitude. It can help a lot. You're not gonna change the other person just by going into it with a positive attitude, but you can shift the way that you're perceiving them. And that can make all the difference, you never really know. But manage your expectations around those family relationships and make sure that you are staying aware of what's going on and you don't let it tear you down and upset you. Focus on the relationships that you know go really well, focus on the relationships that lift you up and make you happy and commit to having a positive holiday experience. Whether you're at home for the holidays or you just have a couple of days off before Nutcracker goes into craziness, it's important to give yourself some time to relax. I think it's kind of tempting, especially if you just have those one or two days going into Nutcracker performances to go crazy and like run all these errands and like do the holiday shopping and you know shop for your secret Santa and do all of those things but I think it's really important to give yourself a little bit of downtime and self-care and rest and relaxation so for you if that's getting a pedicure if that's taking a bath it can be like super simple inexpensive things but look for ways that you can support yourself going into this busy time and then it could also be useful to think about how you're going to continue to give yourself some self-care as the craziness of Nutcracker like really amps up because when we start to have those multiple show days and we start to have you know like four fuss depending on what company you're with some of you will have you know 20 performances in a, a week that's an exaggeration I hope but you know there's those that have really extreme schedules and Nutcracker and like you know, 50 performances over the course of the season or 60 or plus, you know, or, or more. So make sure that you give yourself those moments of downtime to collect, to be calm, to take care of the things you need to take care of, eating healthfully, making good food. This might be a time of year when you would benefit from a little bit of help in the meal department. You might look for some sort of meal delivery service. I like Splendid Spoon. I can link to that below. They have some great soups and smoothies and things. But by finding those little things that you know might cost a, a little bit more, that might be a little bit more of an investment, but that could really support you in doing your best dancing and not feeling totally overwhelmed by the season, that's gonna be essential to help you out. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed to the Whole Dancer YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button below and check out some other videos. There's always new content coming out about once a week on healthy eating, dancer mindset, lifestyle, self-care, 
all that good stuff. I want to support you in being the happiest, healthiest, most well-rounded dancer you could possibly be. So thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.